What's happening, everybody? Of course, it's your host, Brent Young, and you're tuning in to the most award-winning talk show in Memphis, Atlanta, and Mobile, Alabama. I'm talking about Brink TV. Now, of course, it is a little different. You don't see the trophies in the background. That's because we're at a different location. I'm actually at Slade Cartel, and I'm going to go ahead and allow the beautiful owners to introduce themselves. Hi, my name is Nicole Williams. I'm known as Nikki. And I'm Jade. Of course, I got to say thank you, ladies, for being on the show. It really means a lot to have you. You're welcome. You're welcome. All right. Now, we got plenty to talk about because we are in this nice facility. It kind of reminds me of the Brink TV show because you got the white couch. We talk about icy white couches. I love that. So let's talk about this building. How long have you been here? We've been in the building now for about a year. We just opened the business uh, March 21st. Okay. Now, we got to talk about this grand opening because a little birdie told me that you guys had an amazing, we're talking about spectacular grand opening. I mean, everybody was here. All the who's who. Let's talk about the grand opening. What was it like? Yes, it was a great experience. Family, friends, church members, um, just people from the community. It was awesome. It was definitely a success. We were very nervous. We thought no one was going to show up <laughs> <laughs> okay. we were just getting out there we were just advertising we were just putting at slate cartel out there um construction it went on forever but it came out to be a success it's definitely a big memory in our household and we enjoyed it thank you everybody for coming out once again that's amazing. I love it. And it's always beautiful to see, you know, businesses grow and expand the way that you guys. Let's talk about the location. Where exactly are you? We are located at 7730 Wolf River Boulevard, okay. Germantown, Tennessee, um, Suite 108. Okay. We're right on the borderline. The Memphis sign is like right outside our door. Okay. That's amazing. <laughs> so it's Slick Memphis. Okay. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about like operation hours and, you know, when could people come in and stuff like that. Uh, normally, people can book with our uh, stylists at any time. They have a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week access. Okay. Um, you would have to go on the website and whatnot to find the stylist that you're looking for. But as far as normal operational business hours, you're looking at uh, seven days a week from 9 a.m. until about 8 p.m. Okay. That's amazing. So let's go ahead and talk about, because you did mention stylists. How many stylists do you guys have? <laughs> Stylist, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> In this location, um, Germantown location, we actually have 15 stylists. Wow. <laughs> Wait a minute. We're talking about 15 hairstylists. So Definitely. it's really no line, no weight at all, right? Not at all. Not okay. at all. You can come in, walk in, and someone will be waiting on you at the door instantly. Yeah. They're ready. <laughs> now, one thing that I do like about this place, you know, everything is all white. It's like... To me, it reminds me of VIP action at the club. You know, it's a whole experience. Go ahead. Let's dive into the experience. Like, I'm a customer fresh off the street. The first thing is we try to have a clean environment. Um, it, it, it's just clean. Uh, we went with a modern approach and minimalist uh, look. That was the goal. Uh, no clutter. And we want to create an experience for um, our clients. We want them to feel comfortable, even though this is an open studio concept. Uh, we want clients to feel like they're welcomed here, and that was the most important thing that we focused on when it came to the plan and the amount of space and different things like that uh, centered around everything. Yeah, so to pretty much piggyback off of what she said, um, our main goal is just to have our clients return. Um, when you come, the experience is great. You can come in, you can chill, let your hair down, get a glass of wine or a flight. The music is real soothing. Sometimes it's turned up, you know. And then, you know, on our Fridays, you know what we do, we get off. Well, you know how we do it. <laughs> That's cool. I like that. We, we're able to tailor different personalities and characters. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes you just, you just get off work, you want to hear a little bit of jazz, drink your flight of wine, get your hair done relax in the shampoo bowl or friday nights you you may want to do what the young people say in this turn up turn up <laughs> yeah i feel you i feel yeah. you yeah and and like i say with this atmosphere it kind of makes everybody feel like a star it make them feel like it a does. celebrity i like that it does. Um, I often find a lot of the clients after they've been serviced um, standing in the mirror for at least 20 or 30 minutes. Yeah. And you have the stylist like, hey, I have another person. Yeah. But they're usually snapping it up and tagging our salon and, and letting everyone know like, hey, look at me. 
uh, you know, I'm shining. Look at the environment that I'm in. And we've got a lot of people to say, where in the heck are you guys? Yeah. This is not in Memphis. Yeah. Yeah. So, Jay, we got to talk about, like, let's talk about some of the challenges that you face being a hair salon owner. The foremost challenge that I face is the energies. We deal with a lot of energies. Okay. A lot of energies come in and out. So we do try to stay spiritually connected mm -hmm. and stay connected to the universe all around the board because a lot of people come in here, even though this is a salon and you come in and, you know, you're being offered a service and a lot of people come in and they could be dealing with something outside, but they come in and, you know, I, we don't know what they bring with them. Right. <laughs> so right. that's the biggest challenge, just the energies overall. And then... um we like to reverse the energy. We do. We like. We love to the reverse the energy. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. And, that, yes. and that's. I'm gonna be honest. Like, that's one thing that I like. You know, because sometimes, you know, when my hair not done, I'm in a funk. You know, right. I'm. Hey, I got a negative vibe. I'm almost depressed and all of that stuff. Yes. But to be able to come into a salon, a beautiful salon like this, and you know, get my hair braided or whatever, and then I leave out, I'm feeling like a million bucks. And it's awesome that you guys provide that. I think that's tremendous. Thank you so much. All right, so Nikki, let's go ahead and talk more about, you know, are you guys looking for any more stylists? Like, is there any room for any more stylists? Or are we at capacity? What? Let's talk. <laughs> we have a um an approach where okay. we're actively recruiting always because things come about changes happen people decide to move out of town mm -hmm. or may have a baby we, we've known people to be on the floor uh, right. and and they found out that they're expecting wow. so okay. we, we have to modify and tailor things accordingly um so we continue to have an open environment for stylists to come and take a look and inquire about what we have going on because this is not going to be our only location. Uh oh, <laughs> and we're going to talk about that in one second. Right. But let's talk about like the beauty of your team because your team is really like unique. Let's let's talk about it. Yes, our team is awesome. Um, it's a diverse team. Okay. Um, different ethnicities, different walks of life, levels of experience. One of the most important things. Um, about the team right now that's happening in the salon industry is we have registered braiders okay. and cosmetologists mixed in a studio environment on one floor. So there's a such thing as loyalty and respect that has to be taught to our team and also um, w a way of professionalism and a way to conduct yourself inside of this environment with a mixture of different licensures or different registrations mm -hmm. and and that can be challenging and yeah. i know of a lot of salons that are struggling with the, the business processes of that right now but we have a plan in place uh yeah. that has been very successful and everyone is cordial yeah and that's what's important and i think it's tremendous that you guys are also working with you know the newer stylists and helping to further develop and cultivate their skills and you know kind of give them the environment to where it's home you know yeah. This is home for them. That's incredible. So you did mention about other locations. A little birdie told me that you guys are actually opening up. Did you say Barber Cartel? Is, yes. Is that what it's be? Yes. Let's We're about excited it. about that. I'm going to hand this mic to Jay, but okay. yes. <laughs> okay. So Jay, tell me about Barber Cartel. Barber Cartel is going to be a barber shop located over in the East Memphis Olive Branch area. Okay. Um, it's going to be a barber shop of 10 barbers on the floor. Wow. Yes, we do not play gender roles. You can be who you are. Uh -huh. Welcome in our barber um, shop. Um we pretty much going we're pretty much going with the traditional barber shop mm -hmm. look and feel, but it's going to be a little bit a little bit more access. Okay. Um we will provide a little bit more of a I guess you could say luxury feel and, and amenities so now i remember you told me off camera you said something about there's actually going to be a waiting room where you can watch the game yes, and relax yes, and all of that yes. like i know i know the boy i know the men love that so we de we're definitely going to provide that along with retail and you can get a beer or a wine included in your cut that's amazing. So you did mention she mentioned retail. Let's let's get into retail because you guys are actually expanding, you know, and are going to incorporate more. That's true. Yeah. Um <laughs> 
fall of this year, uh, as far as Slate Cartel, we're looking to add more retail uh, to tailor it around a lot of things that women like, mm -hmm. whether it's lip gloss, eyelashes. Um, we're going to have bundle extensions. We're okay. going to have um, all the slimming tees, the waist centers, <laughs> all that great stuff that yeah. cultivates and create income mm -hmm. um, in Slate Cartel. And as far as Barber Cartel, pretty much the same thing. One thing that I did want to mention about Barber Cartel is our barbers are going to be shampooing. Wow. Yes, and that's very important. Okay. okay. That's a must. You have to add that in your service because a lot of times uh, I've heard that that to be the most um the most popular complaint in the mm -hmm. city is that mm -hmm. they don't get shampoo before right. their service. And that's definitely a sought after service, you know, and I think that people should incorporate that more. You, you have something to add on it? Yeah, along with, um, we're going to be doing beard maintenance and okay. dread maintenance as well. So, like, beard, I heard they do, like, facial detoxes for the men with the beards. And then, of course, we're into the dreads. We have dreads, we have dread tissues here along in our... <laughs> <laughs> whipped in our salon as okay. of right now so they do a lot of dread detox and retwist and definitely okay. we have been doing a lot of wigs i don't know what's going on in those uh <laughs> two strand twists yeah yeah yes, yeah they yeah. love those yeah so this is a friendly environment for everyone diversity and men now one thing that i remember is off camera you actually here you guys provide waxing as well right mm -hmm. let's let's get into that <laughs> from the neck from up the neck up okay okay <laughs> let's let's clarify that ladies hey no bikinis here so let's let's get into it uh full facial waxes of uh, the little stash you know sideburns eyebrows of course because before you want to do things like thread or you want to do things like clean them up with the with the bar tinning and stuff like that a lot of times they want to clean it up with waxing and um lash extensions is a part of that service also mm -hmm. with waxing so we have a couple of estheticians that we're adding on board to our team okay. and yes we look forward to that <laughs> now let's talk about the plug what is the plug <laughs> the plug is something i came up with uh, in my living room <laughs> um i was thinking of a way to figure out how i can take the approach of what i used to do mm -hmm. and bring it into our concept and also allow my stylist to make money on the days that they're slow okay. so it's a form of advertising it's kind of similar to walk-ins but of course we know that people no longer walk into a salon Right. They usually call, make an appointment, or go on a website. So if we uh, produce that, we have a 70-30 commission split. Wow. So a lot of our hairstylists that are on our floor aren't really paying booth rent yeah. uh, because it's normally covered because they get plugged at least once or twice a week. And that's the concept to be able to, even though we, ha we are a booth rent salon, we do also offer more uh, services that will bring in income for our stylists so that they can remain at the goals that they set for themselves. Right. Man, that's definitely different from any salon I've ever seen in Memphis. So I want to get more into your background because you did mention, you know, you came up with that idea in the living room. Let's get more into your background. You actually, that's where you got your start doing hair, correct? I did. I did. I've been doing hair since I was in middle school, actually. Okay. And I stopped when I went to college. And, um, you know, you have this idea like, hey, I'm going to get a degree and I'm going to be the best person ever. But life um, will show you that sometimes the road you try to get away from is the road that you end up back on right. so um god has a funny way <laughs> of showing you things and i had a little bit of adversary in 2014 and um after everything and the challenges and whatnot i was brought back to hair and that is when the sew-in boom happened yeah. in, in the city of memphis and the goddess lock boom happened in the city of memphis i'm actually the first person if you hit pound sign goddess lock memphis or pound sign memphis goddess lock uh -huh. i'm the first person that's going to show up uh on instagram Instagram. <laughs> so um, just being one of those uh, first people, I was able to create the income and take care of my children just off hair alone. It was a struggle. It was tough. Uh, but I was able to think about this maybe seven years ago. Like, what if I can take what I'm doing and put it into 10 other stylists? And that's my purpose and my goal. Like, it's not all about money because now I'm at a point or a peak where I'm okay financially. Mm -hmm. It's about being able to to share my purpose and to share what I, has been put into me and to show people that you don't have to do certain things to get to a certain level. 
That's incredible. And I like the fact that, you know, we started in the living room and now we're here. That's pretty much the same, you know, grind that I had. Brink TV began in my living room wow. and then now we have a facility. Same thing with you. Now we got to get into social media. How can the people contact you and book appointments and stuff like that? Sure. Um, you guys can definitely book us on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, Facebook at Slay Cartel 901. Instagram at Slay Cartel 901. Personal Instagrams and Facebook um, at Nikki, 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 901. Nikki three times with a 901. <laughs> and I'm Jaded Marie, J A D E with an extra D, Dan Marie with three E's. So definitely. So this is pretty much like my favorite part of the show, you know, you know, the thing that's different about the Brink TV show is now we have two cameras. So this camera right here, that's you guys camera. Okay. I need for you guys to look into that camera and tell the people men and women you know because i get my hair done too you know yeah, so it's like not it. just it's about nice. well thank you i appreciate that I, you know <laughs> i tried i tried you know but tell the people why they should come to slay cartel for their next style go you should come to slay cartel because we have the nicest environment in the city the newest the most luxurious um environment in the city we have some of the top stylists top cosmetologist out of the state of Tennessee rocking with us. That is why you should come to Slate Cartel. We provide uh, the utmost experience and also training for our stylists so we're never behind. Everyone is always on key with what's happening in the industry and as a consumer that should be the most important thing to you. And we are very uh, sanitary driven. Um, I constantly have meetings and I constantly talk to my stylists about sanitary guidelines and what's happening with everything is of course with the pandemic but just the overall approach with what the state of Tennessee or Mississippi puts in place to protect our clients so we are very very organized and business driven when it comes to the fact of uh, having Slay Cartel as the salon and providing this service to you guys all of that to say it's about the experience the experience <laughs> I love it. So with that being said, make sure you guys come support, patronize, and get your next style done by Slay Cartel and Barber Cartel coming very soon. This fall, be on the lookout for that. I got to say thank you, ladies, for coming thank on the you. show. Thank you thank for you. inviting me to sit on you guys' white couch. That's a change. That's a, that's that's different. We boy. showed you love. Look, y'all. Yeah. Hey, we got Brink TV in the background. I love it. I love it. With that being said, now back to more Brink TV. Yo, Brink. Brink, come here. You hear me? Listen to me. I'm a little salty right now. I mean, you've been doing your thing at Comcast for seven years, but you ain't put a brother on. Come on, man, put me on. You know I'm Cardi B's cousin. All right, man, I'm just, I'm playing. I'm not Cardi B's cousin. I'm just.